What's up everybody, it is John from Obtech coming at you today with a pretty special video. This is my how to choose the best gaming mouse for you. This is for late 2016 and early 2017 edition and actually the features, principles, and what to look for in a gaming mouse are all gonna be applicable for years to come. So be sure to stick around. So at the end of the day, everyone's mouse needs are unique, hand sizes vary, preferences and game selection all varies. So ultimately you can't pick the wrong mouse if you like it. In other words, there are a lot of objective measurements in determining the best mouse, but subjectivity does come into play with how much emphasis you put on each metric. So for the purposes of this video, I've narrowed it down to the top nine criteria, sort of a checklist and guide, so to speak, when choosing your gaming mouse. So if you get a check mark in each of these boxes of criteria, more than likely you're really gonna like your gaming mouse. So starting this video off, sensor and shape are so important. You can have that perfect mouse, but having a shabby sensor will just wreck the performance of your mouse. And if you're not comfortable with the shape of your mouse, you're not even gonna wanna play games. The whole point is to be one with the mouse, one with movement. So having a shape that you're not comfortable with is really gonna be a huge drawback and can cause a host of problems. So first off, let's take a brief look at the sensors that are most prevalent in the gaming mouse market right now. These are image correlation sensors that either use laser or LED to illuminate the surface, of which the sensors analyze thousands of images per second and compare those images to determine the direction and movement of your mouse. I think LED illumination was typically referred to as optical mice tend to fare better when on the right surface. While laser mice really excel on a large variety of surfaces, they can run into problems given the laser sensitivity to the structure and fabric of the surface. The laser's wavelength and angle can overexamine the detail of the tracking surface and depth. This can lead to variants of tracking dependent on the movement of speed of your mouse. The introduction of noise in the image, so to speak, can lead to inaccurate tracking. So then training your muscle memory to adapt to uncertainties and or differences in tracking depending on speed can be suboptimal. For most, it's easier to aim and have the best precision when no matter how fast or slow you're moving your mouse on its surface, the corresponding movement on the cursor on your screen will be the same. With only the change of position determining the cursor's movement and not the rate of change as a variable in the equation. And one more point about a mouse's max DPI, since you see that DPI advertised so much, but it has nothing to do with accuracy and precision. And to be honest, the practical application of something like 12,000 DPI to move my mouse an inch to be able to move over 11 HD 1080p monitors with just one inch of movement doesn't really seem to be any use to me or to the majority of gamers. And if the sensor is using interpolation, subdividing pixels can lead to signal noise and tracking inaccuracy depending on the strength of the image processing and its ability to understand fractions of pixels to determine the right counts relative to the mouse's movement. So what is a good sensor? Well, the PMW3366 as well as the PMW3310 are two of my favorite sensors right now. Now, they are manufactured by Pixar, and you'll also find a lot of Avago sensors like the sensor in the Death Adder Chroma, the 3989 are really responsive and accurate. And you may find Pixart and Avago naming used interchangeably given that there was a cross licensing deal years ago. But in short, you wanna look for zero acceleration, smoothing, pixel rounding, as well as a well-reviewed and tested sensor. So about grip type and hand size. My hand's length comes in around 19 centimeters and the width excluding the thumb of the palm right around nine centimeters. This comes in just slightly above average. So I think it's a great point of reference in this video to be able to compare my hand relative to the size of some popular mice that I have with me today. So starting off with three examples, I have a recent release from Logitech, September 1st. This is the Logitech G403 Progedy. This is the wireless version. It also comes in wired. So for fingertip grip and claw grip, this mouse is just a dream for the dimensions of my hand. There's just a little bit of extra space back there in claw grip or in fingertip grip. And I can also use palm grip if I would like making it a very versatile mouse. But for something that fills my hand a little bit more than the G403 would be something like the Razer Death Adder Chroma, being that it has just that little bit more volume, just that little bit of extra oomph, so to speak, in the shape that make it fit like a glove for a palm grip. For my particular hand, that said, you can still use claw and fingertip grip, although it's not quite as comfortable being that it really feels like the most natural way to grip this mouse is in palm grip. So for something a bit more nimble, we have here the Myonix caster that's really great for claw and fingertip grip. And I do find my accuracy goes up with a little bit of a smaller 
mouse, obviously it begins to diminish as the mouse gets too small. And the Matters Caster is right there in the sweet spot for a mouse that's medium to small size. So since there is quite a bit of variance in hand measurements, I'm gonna put some ratios on the screen right now that you can compare by inputting the dimensions of your hand. So this is gonna be hand length to mouse length and width to mouse width. So now that we have a good idea about how hand size and grip correspond to different mice, I'm gonna give you guys some of my top choices in each category. Small hands with claw grip, fingertip grip, and palm grip. Medium hands with claw grip, fingertip, and palm grip. Large hands with claw grip, fingertip, and palm grip. And as you can see with these mice, I'm listing the weight. So typically mice that are lighter is preferred for FPS gaming and MOBA gaming and low DPI gaming, being that you can move your mouse really quickly, really rapidly, being more lightweight. And also having a lighter weight mouse, it can reduce that hand fatigue, especially if you game for long sessions or work for really long hours at a time. So actually under 100 grams seems to be the trend right now. And what's really popular among eSport athletes for FPS gaming, MOBA gaming, and myself included, I don't like it to be much over 100 grams. Also be sure to take note of how how well your mouse glides or if there's any resistance while you're swiping your mouse across that mouse pad. And a lot of times you can determine this by looking at the feet of the mouse. There's definitely a correlation with mice that have really large feet like the Myonix Caster. And also really important is the switch type, the micro switch and the implementation of the switches. So most high end gaming mice use Omron switches, giving it a light click with a fast reset and are also highly consistent and ready to last for millions of clicks. Quando switches are also popular. The click is a bit stiffer and the reset slightly slower than the former, but definitely gives a certain feel. TTT switches are what you find in most standard mice and may be used in non-essential buttons on a button rich mouse that's also high end. And it's also worth taking a look at shell separation like we have here in the G403 that I actually really like on a lot of mice. You see a complete integration of the shell and the button. So integrate buttons but like it is on the g403 i really like it it makes those clicks feel really consistent also be sure to consider any extra features you want in your mouse five or six buttons is typically the sweet spot six buttons like we have here on the g403 but that depends on what you use your mouse most for for example mmorpg you may like having extra buttons on the side for those macros and if you do utilize having extra buttons then obviously put a lot of emphasis on how many buttons you want on your mouse and it's also important to examine the scroll wheel usually 24 steps or 16 steps. 16 steps feels more definitive in each step. And something that I believe that is proprietary right now to Logitech and is really useful for productivity is that free form scroll wheel you find in a lot of Logitech's offerings. That scroll wheel is great. So there's that, that free form scroll that I love about Logitech. So a little bit more about the feel of the mouse. Be sure to consider the exterior materials used and the inclusion or exclusion of side grips. I love having rubber side grips. They don't have to have a pattern texture, but just having the rubber material really helps a lot in picking up the mouse. And while some have rubber coating covering the entirety of the mouse, I prefer to have a plastic top shelf and then have dedicated grips on the side. It just feels really crisp to rest in your hand and it's not as susceptible to fingerprints. So your mouse stays looking really fresh and snazzy. Also be sure to consider those aesthetic extras if you do love RGB lighting. And lastly, the wireless over wired debate. So almost always I'm gonna side with wired. In the past, wireless just couldn't keep up with the low latencies of wired and possible signal interference was just a no go. But my like the G403 have actually converted me to the idea that if done correctly, wireless can compete with wired, both in terms of click and sensor latency. The scientific test and methodology Logitech has with these mice look pretty sound, but more important to me than that is how it feels using it for myself. And yeah, wireless G403 feels indistinguishable in terms of latency to the wired version. Power consumption is low at a 1000 hertz polling rate, meaning the mouse communicates with your PC 1000 times per second under Logitech software has the power consumption at just 5 milliampers and the entire sensor system at just 12 milliamps and a bit more if you want to use this mouse with RGB lighting. Here's one more time my top picks in each category. Please be sure to check the links down below for more information on each of these mice or head on over to my new website, awtech.com slash gaming mice, where I have them categorized and organized for your viewing. Peace out, guys. It's still all here from, from all tech. So just wanted to let you know, everyone needs to subscribe to uh, Josh's channel. Okay.
That's it for today.